in many cultures, the woman's place is usually defined, a tradition the girl child is forced to follow as she grows into womanhood. It is also from a mother a child first learns the moral code of life, a role she is expected to play for not just the survival of the family, but the community and nation at large. Can it be said that women have translated this position of power and influence in other facets of life? There was war that needed a man. That was why women were relegated to the background. But these modern times, you realize that um, any time a single woman out of a lot comes out, she performs best. At a point in time when we got to a certain house, we were talking to the woman. The husband came out and seriously told us that he wouldn't want the wife to take part in any election. We wouldn't want the woman to take part in any election because there's a lot of work for her to do and she wouldn't have time for that kind of thing. How has others' perception and confinement of women contributed or affected their growth as an influence beyond the home into the political space? Being a woman and grown up and raised up by a woman, I've seen how it is to be brought by a woman. And so growing up, I've always think of uh, how I will become somebody to help the suffering, ease the suffering of my colleague women and mothers in the community. People would say that that is a very difficult task, it's for men. And I say no, there is nothing like this is for men and this is for women. Uh, whatever you aspire as a woman to be, you can and you will be able to do it when you give it time and good planning. The yawning gaps in access to and control over resources, economic opportunities, power and political voice, especially at the local level, worsens the situation particularly in Ghana, a country with 15.6 million of its population representing 50.7% being women. A small a fraction of women who also believe that the politics it's so dirty, it's not a game that people want to engage in and because of uh, its nature and all that. But we cannot blame such women because aspect of Ghanaian politics is dirty, it's unwholesome. And, and that uh, well-meaning Ghanaians uh, or women will not want to venture into these areas. When you come to our religion, you see that women don't need prayers. <laughs> women don't need. So for them, we are restricted to the background. Uh -huh. But in other places, that is not it. Though they don't need it, they listen to them. So you saw that uh, education actually was a problem for women around here. Uh -huh. Because they thought that the men rather needed to go to school. The women have to just be restricted and then move on to marry. And uh, even now, it's not ev everybody or every community that is accepting it. The recent, if I say recent um, district assembly elections we had, that is the 2019 one, um, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like we didn't even have up to 10 women elected. And you can imagine the number of electoral areas we have in the northern region. And we are not getting up to 10 women elected. It's not encouraging. If you visit the northern parts, the, 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 the level of education is not that high as compared to that of the South. So you find that participation of women at that level in some parts of the country are not as high as you have in others. And because of lack of education, you know, it's very difficult for you to convince people or women that they have to take part in governance at the local level. The educational challenges are immense. Therefore, they are unable really to compete at the level that they are required. And pressure also, we have pressure from families, we have pressure from spouses that bear heavily on women standing for political positions. 
Ghana's district assembly system was introduced as the highest political authority in the districts in 1988 under PNDC Law 207 and strengthened by Article 242 of the 1992 Constitution to make local government effective centers of self-governance, local participation, decision-making, planning and development. Article 35, Section 5 of the Constitution also mandates the state to decentralize to ensure accountability, reduce urbanization and urban crowding. Ghana's Constitution and the Local Government Act gives extensive powers to metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies, MMDAs. The participation in the digital elections has also been low generally. And there are a number of reasons that accounts for that. Limited awareness and education on the local government concepts accounts for the low participation. A good number of Ghanaians really don't appreciate the relevance of the local government concept itself, let alone show interest in the election that elects people into those offices. Another reason is also perception of insignificance the part of the local governance system, uh, comparing that to the general election, we we'll think the system, the local government system is less significant compared to the general election, and so the interest there is not too high as compared to the general election. At, in the general election, because the parties are involved, the, the, the noise around getting out the vote is louder because they whip out the enthusiasm and push their supporters to go to the polls. It helps. Um, the parties are not involved, at least officially, in the local elections. And so that extra push that they give at the national level is not present, you know, at the local level. That could also be part of the reason. Women have failed to attain the 30% UN recommended threshold in the districts making gender-based exclusion in these structures a major minor's inequality in participation. The underrepresentation results in a democratic deficit as women's expertise, knowledge and experience are not adequately harnessed and utilized. There's this socioeconomic obstruction. Are they financially capable? In the society, are women in such a position that they will be able to, on their own, stand out, come out, and contest the men. If you don't have the finances, the people undermine you. One other key aspect of the challenges will have to do with our ability to multitask. Because as a woman, they want to see everything about you being perfect. If not, they say, ah, tada fumbi yelia. Didn't we say a woman cannot be an MC? because they are looking for you at an odd hour and you are nowhere to be found, they have to call on you. You have to be on their beck and call. Whether it's midnight, whether it's early morning, whether it's day, you know. So if you cannot multitask as a woman, it becomes difficult for you to lead. I've been the desk officer for the West Gonja Municipal Assembly. Maybe I have a wretched motorbike, which I ride. I want to go around. I don't have fuel because our common fund itself is not common. So how do I go? You go to a radio station, you want to make noise, they say you should pay something. Where am I going to get there, something to pay? Ghana has signed on to and ratified all major international protocols that support the promotion of women's rights and their active participation in decision making. Among them are the 1981 Commission for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the Beijing Platform for Action in 1995, the Solemn Declaration on Gender Equality 2004, and the ECOWAS Protocol on Good Governance and Democracy 2002. The Global Agenda 2030 maintains that in fulfilling the promises of sustainability, peace and human progress, Gender equality is fundamental. In 2015, we had uh, 
1,102 women candidates contesting for a district level election. Out of that, 280 were successful, that is, were elected. And that comes to about 25% of the elected assemblymen. And for 2019, 909 women contested in the elections, and out of that, 234 constitute 26%. Um, of, uh, 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 of the candidates uh, won the election. So uh, you could see that the percentage of elected women candidates are generally low. Rwanda has become a model for the world to follow. With a record-breaking 61.3% women in parliament, the question remains, how did they achieve this? The use of constitutional water system was just one of the ways Rwanda scaled up the participation of women in its polity. 18-year-old girls automatically become members of the National Women Council. The South African experienced a similar in perspective with the 42.3% of seats in parliament reserved for women, while Uganda has it as a policy to reserve one parliamentary seat of the 39 districts for women. These have aided the increase of political representation. Ghana's Electoral Commission has once again changed its October 30 date for this year's district assembly elections to December 19. This is the surest way to ensuring development at the local level. Development, they say, begins at the community level. It is in communities women and men alike discover their voices, assert their rights and mobilize action to achieve their developmental aspirations. Because it is at the district level, at the local level, that ordinary citizens experience the democracy in action. If you elect your MP, unless you are in Accra, your MP will go away to the legislature, which is in the capital. If you elect the president, he is in the capital, or she is in the capital. But if you get to elect your, your, the head of your local government, they sit in the community with you, right? And they have to respond to your needs and they have to be accountable to you in the ways in which we hold the MPs accountable. Because that's, that, that doesn't happen, there's a bit of lack of interest, but it, it's a missed opportunity. With the 2024 general election very close, the time might just be right for those little changes to begin. We need more education, and until the alternative bill is put in place, we will still have some of these problems, because you can't do the education alone. But when it becomes an issue of a, a, a percentage is assigned or awarded, that this is the percentage we want a woman to be in our, uh, in our assembly, this percentage is reserved for them. It means it sort of creates opportunity. I happened to be, uh, meet a Kenyan friend who told me that in their parliament, for instance, they have this particular appointment for women. You understand? Uh -huh. So until we start also doing something, so the mean, women are many. Certain positions are reserved for them. I know a lot have been done. A lot have been done in the past by civil service organizations and NGOs. But why is it that instead of increasing and gaining, we are rather declining? The best ever we've had as Ghanaians was in 2006, where we had 10.1% as female assembly members. And since then, it has been 7%, it has been 6%, it has been 4%, and this particular current one is the worst ever, less than 4%. What is happening? So me, I am, I am afraid for us as a country. It's a serious democratic deficit, and we need as all stakeholders to play a role, more especially from the root cause of the problem. That is in our traditional council. I think we should move action. Action means we should rather put more action than words. 
I am thinking that women should come out and we'll go to the parliament and advocate. Either we will tie our heads in red bands and flags everywhere around in Accra. They will march to parliament and tell them that we need the bill to be passed. The issue of participation in local governance is a right. Encouraging women to be part of the process of making decisions, economic decisions, political decisions. And also remember that women and men don't have the same concerns. Women's concerns differ from those of men. So if the women's concerns are not represented at a government that says it is the closest to them, then there is something wrong. We are not doing the correct thing. It is important that intentional and urgent measures are put in place to help address the underrepresentation of women's rights from the local to the national level. The upcoming district level elections therefore offers opportunity to mobilize women for increased participation in assembly discourse in order to change the narrative.